You can create your own photo album using only Canva. Before you start, ask yourself this important question. Do you want it to be a digital photo album or have it printed? Or perhaps both? If you want it to be printed, before you get started, check the exact dimensions and file requirements with your printing provider before you get started. Looking for a digital photo album? Decide on how you'd want to share it as a video, a presentation, a PDF file, or maybe a web page. This will help you choose the perfect dimensions for viewing. Create a folder for your photo album before you begin so you have everything in one place. This will make the design process much easier and a lot more fun. Then upload your photos to this file before you get started. Search and pick your elements and garnish beforehand so it'll make the work much easier and your photo album look like a professional one. Pick and place your desired grids on each page. Add your text, names, places, dates, memories. You get it, right? Are you ready for the tutorial? Let's go! In this tutorial, I want my photo album to be printed. So I will go to create a design, click on the custom dimensions tab, choose the inches, and then type in the dimensions 11 by 8. I'll create a new design and I will open a new folder for this matter. I named it number one, just so it would be easy to find it at the top of my file list. Then I will go to the Elements tab and I will start searching for nice elements that I want to incorporate in my design. This will be much easier and I won't have to search every time. So I will just go to Elements, I'll click... I have a list of search words, so one of them would be Travel. And each element that I like, I will just click on these three dots and click on Add to Likes. You can see here that it is saved to likes. You can find your likes right here on the left and you can have all your liked elements in one place. And since this is my summer vacation, I will look for summer elements. I'll also try under vacation. Stamps would be nice. Passport. You can also look for words or text and have some nice word combinations to use in your photo album. I'll show you some. I can search for tape. Tape would be a very nice garnish and decoration for your design. You can also look up paper and have all sorts of torn paper and backgrounds that you can use in your design. You can add notes. You could also look up the word torn and have these torn pieces of paper that can add a lot to your design. This actually looks like sand. Be creative. Use your imagination. So now we'll go to Grids under Elements. And here you have grids that begin with one photo and up to four by four. So decide how many photos you want in each page and make a few grids and then you can multiply them. I will go with this. Do notice that you can resize the grid within the page and you can also space the photos inside the grid. I'll add another page and I'll just go about and pick grids I like. I'll add a page each time. I'll just resize this a bit and I will go now to frames and add some interesting frames that I can use in my photo album. For example, I'll type in frames Polaroid. Here you have this Polaroid frame, which is very nice in a photo album, and you can multiply it and duplicate it as many times as you want. I'll just duplicate it one more time and I'll have these two Polaroid frames. I can also use this if I had 
any funny photos I'd like to add in my photo album. Just like in those automatic photo machines. I'll go back to grids and continue filling my photo album pages. Let's go to the next step. I will click down here on this little icon to see my page manager so I can see all the grids I've placed. Now I can duplicate them and I can replace them. So I'll take this one here. You'd want to make your photo album as interesting as possible. So if one page has a grid of four or five, have the next page with less photos. So I'll try and make here an interesting combination. Make sure that you have an even amount of pages if you're printing out a photo album. If you have an odd number, just duplicate one or delete one. Do note that you must have a page that will be your cover for your photo album and a page that will be the back cover. This is very important whether you are printing your photo album or having a digital photo album. So I will just add another blank page and now I will go to my folder and add my cover. So I have uploaded all my photos to my folder. So I will go to my folder. This is my number one folder and I will pick my cover photo. For this tutorial, I just used the Canva photo bank. This doesn't have to be a photo. This could be also only a text box, but I will go with a photo and I will pick this one. I will just drag it so it will be all over my cover. Pick photos that are complementary to each other, that the colors of the photos work together. One other tip I wanna give you is do take under consideration that the page coming afterwards will be also complementary to the page before. If this is a printed photo album, you'd want the left page and the right page to complement each other. Also, if you're having a digital photo album, take that under consideration. Now you see here I have photos with different filters. I suggest you use the filter feature to have them all work and speak the same visual language. So I will just try out and play around a bit and I think this epic filter is a good one and I will just have it on each photo in this specific page. So all my photos look as if they were taken at the same time with the same filter. This looks much better. And now let's go to the next step. I will now choose my back cover. I will go to my likes and I will pick this vehicle. I will add another suitcase to this, place it right here and group it all together. Resize it a bit. And now let's go to the second stage. Now we will add some text. I will go to the text feature and I will type in summer vacation and I will choose a font that I really like which is called Bernier Shade. This has kind of a retro look. I will adjust the line height and play around with the colors. Now I want to add 2019. I will go to handwriting and pick this um, Buffalo font. This handwriting makes it look a little bit more personal. Then I will go and search under elements for brush stroke. I like to use that to emphasize a certain part of my text. So I will just pick this one make a few adjustments, put it behind my 2019 and change the color. 
Now we'll go to page number two. I will add a few of my elements to this page. Don't add too many. Less is more. Mess is a bore. Here, this tape comes in handy. And I can just place it here and add some text on top of it. I'll change the font to Amsterdam. I really like this font and it's kind of new. This is a big upgrade for this page. Now in this Polaroid page, I have a blank background so I can add an interesting background. I can go to photos and search for sand and I'll try out a few sand backgrounds and I will go to adjust and blur it just a tiny bit so my Polaroid photos will pop out. I will add this banner and add some text in it. And I will also add something in the second Polaroid. I will go to my likes and I will add this flagged banner. I can change the colors of my flag and I will pick the colors from this photo. Change the white to green. And I think that's cute. I can also add some washi tape to my Polaroid. Crop it and place it at the corner. I love this page. Let's move on. In this one, I will just add another washi tape. Oh, make sure that once you drag it, this doesn't replace your photo. If this happens, just move it to the side. And then with your arrow keys on your keyboard, you can just move it. It will never replace the photo inside your grid. Just a little trick I learned along the way. And now I want to add some shadows to it. So I'll duplicate this and I will change the colors, all three colors to black. Now since I cannot blur this because this is not a PNG, I will just go to transparency and I'll position it backward. I think it's a little too transparent. I will change that from seven to let's say 21. Okay, this looks better. I'll place it behind and I have a shadow which makes this a little more interesting. And this is my cover page. Now I will add some interesting text and I will type in planning our next vacation. Now I'll go to the page manager and look at everything once again. See if everything is working out, if I have my even number of pages, if I need to add something, move something, delete. Now, if you're going on a digital photo album, you can also add videos to your photo album. This is a big plus when you're going digital. So I'll just demonstrate that. I will move this text and I picked this frame of a smartphone and I will add a video to it. For example, I'll go to videos. You probably have your own videos, but I'll just search for something under beach and I can make the background a video as well as my smartphone frame. Just want to show you what it looks like. Now, I personally think that going with video as a background and as an image on the same page is a little bit too much. So, Pick just one of them. So for example, I can put this cute kid in my photo frame and just pick a static background. It'll work much better, you will see. If this is a digital photo album, you can also add music. You can also animate your pages and have them fade, rise, pop, stomp, whatever you like. And if you're going to print it, just download it as the printer provider asks you to. And if you're going to present this as a presentation, this is how it will look like. You can send the link to whoever you want and they can see your photo album. You can also download it as a website and then send the link out there. So this is my photo album tutorial. I hope you liked it and you'll enjoy creating it. Bye. -oosh.